If you want to talk about cordage, cordage is little small twine to more general purpose size on up to bigger stuff and rope and I even uh, when I taught my son how to do this he went down and got some dune grass and made a, a rope that was about that big around out of dune grass and then went ahead and pulled his truck with it. So cordage is something that's useful, very useful and that is needed in a wilderness survival situation <clears throat> in that if you're out there and you want to make something, you know, you've got two shoelaces and, and uh, you can rip off some of your shirt and stuff, but after a while you're going to run out. And uh, so you want to be able to make uh, cordage out of what Mother Nature gives you. <clears throat> so we're going to end up uh, teaching how to go ahead and do a, what we call a reverse twist. And uh, it comes in very handy. It's an easy technique once you catch on and you do it with all this stuff. And so we can make little dinky tiny stuff and we can make very large, and, you know, ropes like this. And so we want to teach you that and ta also talk about different um, types of fiber that you can get. And uh, so. <clears throat> we use what we call a reverse twist. And the reverse twist is interesting because you're going to have you're going to have uh, two pieces that that you're twisting together. And if I was to take and uh, um, figure out, you know, put a piece on here and actually figure the pressure it took to, to actually snap this. And uh, you know, and that's X amount of pressure. And when you twist these two together, you'd think that, okay, well, to do this, it would be twice whatever, what, the one, what the one is. And actually, um, because of the physics, you're, you're not pulling straight on, on the fiber, you're actually pulling around the corner as it's twisted. You'll actually get more than twice what it takes to break one in order to break two of them when they're reverse twisted the proper way. So <clears throat> reverse twist is a very handy thing. And that's what all of our ropes are done with too. So <clears throat> we're going to teach you how to do this and uh, from the little stuff on up to the big stuff. And what we'll do is we'll show you how to make these little ones here. And the little ones are handy because you got all kinds of little different uses for the little ones. Here we've whipped the ends of a a rope there. We got them here again and you can use them for really small to catch more of the naive fish, you know, and stuff like that. So little cordage works real well on up to bigger cordage. Um, we got different materials. We're gonna actually teach you on uh, what's what we on uh, raffia grass. Now raffia grass actually comes from Africa. And uh, some of the stuff we have around here, which you find in your flower gardens, plus you can find it in the uh, out in the wild, is the daylilies. This is daylily leaf here, and uh, makes a really nice cordage. And uh, we'll show you how to do that as well. Um, we uh, talk about nettle and how stinging nettle, and we show you how to go ahead and harvest that as well. And uh, <clears throat> we harvested some and we talked about how we had to dry it. This is what it looks like once it's dry. And we, uh, we can uh, take this in and once you dry it down it shrinks. And what you want to do is go ahead and let this stuff shrink. And when it gets to a shrunken size then we can go ahead and wet it again. And then it won't shrink anymore. And you want to you wanna work with these when they're wet because that, uh, that helps it from cracking. So this is nettle here and uh, this is what it looks like. Now nettle is very strong cordage. If I was to make a bow drill that would be one of my choices would be nettle and uh, very very strong cord and that's a good thing there. Nettle is, is excellent for doing that type of stuff. 
So you can see that this is a multi-fiber here. We got a bunch of strands going into one and, and a bunch of strands into the other and then we twist those together to make a, a size of a cord. And you can make very large cords that way as well. Just grab a bigger handful, twist those together. But you can make multiples or bigger rope other ways as well. And this is just one way here. And uh, this cord here that I made, one of, one of my beginnings when I was first starting. And, and you can see that's a pretty nice cord. And this is daylily as well. And it's a multiple strand, so we end up working our reverse twists, and we'll show you how to do that here in a little bit. And uh, end up reverse twisting uh, two different sets, and uh, then I'm creating this, this cordage like this here, a little smaller piece, and a little rope. Um, this right here happens to be a uh, a piece of, of a husk off the ear of corn and I tried that and this makes really strong it's pretty strong stuff but the, the problem with this is you're adding in almost constantly so it's a little a little hard to work with as far as that goes but but that's really strong there's just all kinds of materials this here is a cattail and uh, uh, cattail leaves, you can use different size leaves to get different size cordage. This right here is a really strong as well. Cattail is pretty good strong stuff. And uh, this is cattail as well. This is a single strand here and these I put two strands together to make us a, a larger rope. And uh, <coughs> so that works as well. Now, here I took a uh, these are daylily leaves here, and I work them into two strands, and then I put the two strands together. Now, you, <clears throat> when you're doing multiple strands, you'll uh, actually get more of a round look to it if you use an odd number of strands. Here we have two, and it looks kind of rough. I mean, it works, but it looks kind of rough. And then this one here, you'll notice that we have three that are together and when we put that you get more of a uniform round type of rope when you're using three so odd numbers will give you a better round uh, result on the ends then uh, we got this end whipped we'll show you how to do that as well here we'll have a little clip on that and uh, show you how to do that and then these are multiples again into one <coughs> now a lot of your long bladed stuff works um, again if you want really high uh, strength stuff if I really need stuff that was really strong and I didn't have nettle then I go to tree bark and we show you how to process uh, willow and uh, ash and uh, these here are from ash and uh, they make a very strong rope the ash does ash and willow willow is a little easier to work with than uh, the ashes, but um, both of these work pretty good. And you're using the inner bark of that. And so <clears throat> we'll show you how to do tree bark. So check out that clip. And uh, these are also ash here. This is a single strand here. And then these are three into one. And we we'll show you how you can do that too as well. So, so <clears throat> but uh, you know, sometimes you'll use multiple types of uh, cordage on, on a single project. This here is a is a pump drill that I made and uh, hold my counterweight here we've got this is a this is a, a daylily leaves there and uh, we got multiple sizes because we got this size here and then this is also daylily leaf here on the ends but uh, then I used the cattail for my actual uh, wrap up type here. So this is my pump drill that I made. And so, um, you know, when you start looking at making stuff like this, you can see to where, you know, shoelaces are gonna be enough. 
and uh, anymore. So stuff out of Mother Nature, there's just all kinds of stuff out there. Um, I don't have on the table here, I don't have uh, in the wintertime, a lot of times you can go and get the the uh, milkweed and we show you how to find and crush and do that. So, so anyways, these are different cordages that you can make out of Mother Nature stuff and there's just a slew of stuff out there. I'm always trying stuff. Now, <clears throat> down in the rainforest when you're down there, you're going to uh, use a lot of vines and that works quite well down there. When you're up here in a, a northern country where I'm at, we don't have the vines, so once in a while you'll run into a grapevine. But uh, then there is a, a source that you can use that's just as plentiful and uh, just as uh, versatile as vines. But you're going to find it underground, and that's your spruce roots. And these are spruce root here, and you're going to dig up the you know your evergreen roots. And you're going to want to strip that very outside off so that it turns white like that. Because if you leave that on, when that dries out, it'll tend to make this brittle. And uh, then you want to soak these again, uh, a lot of times in boiling water. And uh, the Indians use these extensively. Everything just about that they sewed together, their birch bark canoes and their baskets and their um, pots and stuff was all done with, with spruce root. And so... Um, those are very, very handy. That's what you use up here in the northern end, just like uh, you would vines down there and in the, in the, below the equator to the other side. So, so anyways, we're going to go ahead and set up here and we'll show you how to actually do these twists. And, uh, and then we'll show you, once you learn how to do the twists, then we'll also show you how to put multiples together. And uh, we'll probably use some of these to show you that. Well, then we'll have a little clip to show you how to winnow the ends as well. So we'll go ahead and set that up, and uh, then you can take a look at that when we get done here. So.